And a very good evening to you listeners and viewers. We've not said that ever before. Good to have you come in. It's five o'clock on the button or just a few seconds past. It's Tuesday the 11th of May 2021. This is Crafty Cafe, show number 23, Making Wishes with our special guest, Stephen Lenton. You're listening to Maria and Russell broadcasting live. This is the Crafty Cafe on LearnRadio.net. And a very good evening to you, listeners. Hello, welcome. This is going to take a little bit of explaining, folks. My goodness. So we are live on our usual radio channel. If you're enjoying us in the car on your way home on 4 or 5G, you are very welcome to our live show. Nothing is changing. If you're enjoying us on your tablet or PC or device, then you can enjoy a televisual feast as you can have a look at us live on screen. We are broadcasting our visual feeds from our studios and you can see Stephen is up in his studio there give us a wave Stephen he is there in his studio hello and Maria is in her studio in London and I am here in the main HQ studio it's really good to have your company folks and we'd love for you to get in contact with us here are our details contact the show right now drop us a text to 07 8600 26 400 or email the studio on learn radio live at gmail.com you can also write on our contact page and drop us a shout out just head to learnradio.net and click on on air shout outs remember we're broadcasting live until 6 p.m this evening don't forget You'll need the bill payer's permission before texting us, and only use your first names, please. This is Crafty Cafe. And a very warm, sunny afternoon. Welcome to Maria. How has your week been, Maria? It's been fabulous. It's been very busy. I can't believe it's Tuesday already. So I'm um, very excited to be here. And we've got a bit of a fidget on, but that's okay. I'll have to keep still. Uh, absolutely fine we're in high definition fabulous i have all got good faces for radio i have to say it's amazing and a big thank you to our very special guest we'll introduce him in just a minute stephen lenton who's decided to come along with the ride on what a, a hoot and a half it's going to be this evening it was just a perfect opportunity to try some of that we'll tell you more about the technology later on in the show uh, but the broadcast uh, will probably uh, continue for the whole of the show and we can maximize our cameras and we'll let you see the draw along and everything full screen if we possibly can uh, both the audio and the video should be available afterwards for your enjoyment and delectation if you'd like to tag us or tweet us all of those lines are open and of course a bit further down the show page either mouse down or swipe down if you would like folks and you can post us comments on the padlets there padlet one is for general comments and other materials that i've already posted my 3d teapot in the mixing desk there i just couldn't not join in there we'll give you all the details and also on the show page folks you'll see an ability for you to actually download some of the uh, templates that we're working with in jpeg and pdf format and if you go to stephen's website stephenlenton.com you can download some enhanced learning resources we'll give you some more details about that maria what do we have in store for our listener learners today Thank you very much, Russell. So today we are thinking about making wishes. Now, some people make a wish when they're blowing their candles out on a birthday cake or when you're throwing a coin into a wishing well or a fountain. And sometimes people make a wish when they see a shooting star. Now, I'm very good at blowing the wishes on a dandelion head. I don't know if you've ever done that, Russell. I know it's a bit naughty because they kind oh, of go all over yeah, the place. They do. They do. do. And hay fever is a bit rife this year, I have to say, because of our particularly wet spring and sunny uh, period at mm. the moment. A lot of hay fever. So I'm keeping away from those dandelion heads. But uh, yes, I have done. It's lovely, isn't it? Yes, it's lovely. So coming up in the show, we're going to welcome the fabulous author and illustrator Stephen Lenton, who is brilliant. I mean, and that's not a secret to anybody. Now, he was on our recent after school book club reading from the book Genie and Teeny Make a Wish. And it is an absolutely funny book. There is a brilliant word in it, Russell. Can you remember what the word is? Oh, I've used it all day. It's Alakazam Bum Whistle. 
Love it. Bum whistle. Yes, exactly. Well done. It's such a brilliant book. Now, to get ourselves warmed up, let's warm up those fingers and let's think about our starter activity. So we would like you to find something to draw with and something to draw on, as usual. And we would like you to draw a dandelion head and think about your wishes. And we've got a brilliant track, Russell, haven't we, to help us? We have indeed. And if you're new to the show, folks, whilst you are drawing along, because we'd like you to draw and then share that with us on our Padlet 1, we're going to play some music. Got three minutes to get your drawings up. And whilst the music's playing, you can enjoy the music on our radio player. You're listening to Maria and Russell broadcasting live. This is The Crafty Cafe on LearnRadio.net. And you join us live, folks. It is nine minutes past five. It is show number 23, Making Wishes, with our special guest, Stephen Lenton. And just like any formidable artist, he's been doodling. And there's his doodle on our screen there. If you're joining us on the radio, we'll need to use our video player, which is immediately uh, available beneath it, because that is live and fabulous. Uh, thanks very much for writing on the Padlets. Always love to uh, hear from you. And thank you so much for sharing that. Maria, what do we have already? Thank you very much, Russell. So we have Lola and Mummy. We are looking forward to seeing you today as well as hearing you. Yes, Russell, we always say see you on the radio later, but we never we do we never actually see each other. This no, is great. We never so, mean it. We never mean it. Today, this Lola week, and we Mummy. Mean it. Thank you so much for tuning in to seeing us. Thank you. Brilliant. And Megan's been in contact. Hello to my year three class listening today. Hello, year three. Uh, hope you can make some genie teapots in school tomorrow. We'll look forward to that. Don't forget, you can download the templates from this website or go to stephenlenton.com for uh, more fabulous material. What else do we have, Maria? Thank you, Russell. So Mrs. C says, really looking forward to today's show. Thank you very much, Mrs. C, for joining us. Excellent. And another regular listener, Marthy, has been in contact. Hello from me. Hello, me, Marthy. Hello from her. Oh, I love that. She's copying <laughs> us. And hello from him. Bless you. Bless you, my dear. That is absolutely stunning. Thank you so much. We'll move on to Padlet 1 in a little bit more detail when we look at those as well. Maria, what do we have next? Thank you very much. Now, usually I get to lead the make-along, but not today. We have the incredible, the fantastic... The magnificent Mr. Stephen Lenton joining us today. Oh, hold today. on a second. Welcome Let's go. Stephen. There you go. Hit it. Here we go. Here we go. Hello. 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 Thank you so much, Stephen, for the Crafty Cafe Learning and Making Show Make Along. Now, if our listeners haven't listened to the After School Book Club yet, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your new book, Genie and Teeny Make a Wish? Sure. No problem. So, yeah, it's, it's the first book that I've written. Um, I have written a picture book before, but I did have a lot of help from a lovely editor called Louise Bolongaro for that one. But apart from my agent giving me a few little tips and, and tricks and, and the editor tweaking a little bit, I sort of managed to write this on my own, um, which I never thought I would do. So there's a little tip as well. If you think you might have a book in your brain somewhere, don't put it off. Just just keep making notes and everything. And um, one day you might get a book out there. So this is it. This is Genie and Teeny. It is all about... Grant the genie who meets a little lost dog and together they go on some amazing adventures. Um, so yeah, this is the first one I've written, but I've, I've um, illustrated lots of books like Octopus Shocktopus and Shifty McGifty and Slippery Sam um, and um, Frank Cottrell Boyce's new book, which is out on Thursday, which is called Noah's Gold, which I just happen to have here, which is really cool because under the cover, there is a treasure map. Ooh. on the actual cover which everyone's very everyone including frank is very pleased with so that's good uh, oh, so that's, that's a really good adventure story it's a bit like the goonies kind of thing um children stuck on a desert island um that's really cool so yeah lots of stuff going on but this is the first one that i've written as you've probably gathered by now because i've repeated myself repeatedly um and yeah there you go so that's genie and teeny and we're going to draw a teapot thank you very much now russell People can listen again, can't they? Our listeners can listen again to Stephen Lenton's fabulous interview. Where can they find Absolutely. that? Absolutely. On the show page, folks, just go to the top menu. They're all live shows and you can look through them. Or you can do a search for Stephen Lenton by typing his name in the search box. Or, folks, you can just go to the book club, click down and find Stephen Lenton. Or if you like to type, then learnradio.net forward slash Stephen Lenton. Every which way you can. He is truly playing everywhere.
Maria. Fabulous. Thank you very much. So listener learners, I'm sure you have everything you need. So here we are with our live make along with Stephen Lenton. It's a make along a Lenton. Over, hey. over to you, Stephen. Now I like that. I've got draw along a Lenton, haven't I? But yeah, make along a Lenton. That's quite good. Craft along anything. So we are going to draw a basic teapot shape to begin with. Now, um, as Russell and Maria have mentioned, you can download um, an existing template either from um, this site or from my website, stephenlenton.com. So if you're not too keen on drawing your own teapot shape to begin with, you've already got one that you can print out, okay? And I didn't fill my um, activity sheets with lots and lots of things that need to be printed. It's all quite sparse because I don't want to use your ink up, teachers, because I know that's a little bit annoying. You don't want a, a really heavy board, do you? Don't use all your ink up. So what we, what we are going to do first is draw a teapot and then you can decide at home or at school if you're going to decorate the outside of your teapot or the inside of your teapot the outside or the inside. Now this, I've actually got, if you've read the book, you know that Grant lives in a teapot and mm. this is his actual teapot. This is the one we're gonna draw with stars on the outside. Now I'm going to tip it very carefully to the side. Oh, I'm afraid that Grant's scatter cushions and all his hats have rolled to one side. <laughs> He's having a nap at the moment. Um, and if you can hear any snoring in the background, that's my dog, Big Eared Bob. He's fed up of this already and he's gone, to, he's gone and fallen asleep. Now. If you want to draw a teapot, the best thing to do is because there is nothing trickier in life than drawing a big circle on a sheet of paper. It is quite a daunting task. So find something that is around this size to draw around. Oh, that's now, a good idea, Stephen. I've got a Le Creuset dish because I'm trying to be middle class. So... That's what I'm going to draw around. <laughs> and it's I'm a lovely using... colour. It matches, it matches Grant, nice. isn't it? I know, right? I know. I've decided on the teal collection with a bit of orange thrown in here and there. But yeah, no, it's, it's almost very a perfect nice. match for that. Mm -hmm. That's very satisfying. So place that in the centre of your paper like that. And we are going to draw all the way around it. I would normally be using a pencil, but so it shows up nice and clearly on camera, I'm using a marker pen. So draw carefully around. It doesn't matter if you make any mistakes though, because it just doesn't matter because it's for fun. You're not getting marks or anything. And we should have a perfect circle. Ta -da! There's a little blip there, but it doesn't matter. And a rogue piece of glitter star. Now, we could turn that into anything at this point, couldn't we? It could be a sun, it could be a black hole, it could be a face, it could be anything. But no, today we are going to be a teapot. Now, if you're left-handed, you might want to draw the handle on this side. If you're right-handed, draw the handle on this side. Now, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to pick up my teapot this side. So I'm going to draw a handle. Now, a handle is just a curved line. It should be fairly easy, and it can be as big or as small, as fancy or as simple as you like. You could put some twiddly bits on it, but I'm just going to show you the basic version and then draw exactly the same shape, but a little bit smaller inside. Try and keep the width of the handle the same all the way round. There you go. Now it could be one ear, couldn't it? If you drew that again, that would be a really good face shape. But now we're gonna do the spout. Now the spout is a little bit trickier because we want it to be nice and sort of curved. You can just do a straight line spout which would be quite easy, but let's challenge ourselves a little bit. And we're gonna draw the base of our spout first, and it goes something like that, curve up and to the left. So just a slight curve, two curves. And then we're gonna draw on the other side, but it gets fatter the nearer to the circle that we drew you get. Now, because Grant finds this teapot in the middle of a park, it isn't a perfect teapot. It has a little bit missing in the spout. So we just put a little V shape in the top of the spout there. And it also has a crack on the side. Now to draw a crack, we're just gonna do like, it's a bit like lightning. Duh, duh, duh. This is a good, this is a top tip of how to draw a crack or lightning, okay? So again, we're going to do exactly the same shape, down, along, and down. But try you start here, but then you come away and out, 
but then you want to join back up to here so you go down and in so that's a really good lightning shape or a really good crack of a teapot so that's why we know it's Grant's teapot because it's got the bit missing there and it's got the chip on the side right now we're going to draw another circle it's a small circle for the um Sorry, Grant, I'm going to wake you up, aren't I? But the, for the for the lid. So we're going to draw this knobbly bit of the lid. Carefully put that back down so I don't wake Grant up. Now, we could draw around something again, but I, I think you're more than capable of drawing a little circle at the top. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And it doesn't have to be a circle. You could have a diamond shape. You could have another little character there or something. You're designing your own magical teapot. Now this makes the lid we're going to draw a slightly curved line we don't want it to be too curved down here because it just wouldn't look right and we don't want it to be really straight because it would just not look as jolly and round if you do a slight curve it just gives that impression that the teapot is slightly round there you go another top tip now we need a base for our teapot so we're going to draw two lines coming out one that side and one that side and then we're going to just join those up with, again with a curved line. Follow that line of the circle that we drew underneath. So there is our base. Now, because I've drawn the crack on the outside of the teapot, that gives you the clue that I'm going to draw some stars and decorate, decorate the outside. But what I'd like to show you now is the inside of Grant's teapot. So if you've read the book or you're starting to read the book, you will know that inside he has lots of amazing little things. Now, this is only half the teapot. We're only seeing this side. Obviously, on this side of the teapot, there's even more stuff. So he's got rows of hats that he uses in all his stories and adventures that goes all the way round the top. It's a big circular room. And then he's got a disco ball because he likes a bit of a bop. He's got lots of magic potions and things. He's got his bed. He's got his favourite teddy bear. He's got lots of scatter cushions. He's got a little toilet. He's got a little toilet roll. He's got a little mirror. He's got a vacuum cleaner, feather duster, uh, an apron, and <laughs> his cleaning outfit, and a little stove. So if you decide to uh, design the inside of your teapot think about the things that you love that's another top tip only draw things that you really love if you start drawing things that you're just not that into you'll lose interest and you might not finish your drawing but what do you like collecting grant collects hats and he loves dancing and he loves cushions and he's got lots of magic potions because he's a genie and lots of books as well he's got because he loves reading so what do you like what do you collect and maybe draw some of those things if you choose to design the inside of your teapot. Now, I'm going to carry on and draw the outside. And I'm going to show you how to draw a star. Now, we're going to draw quite a few of these. And you want to start off with a shape like that, an upside down V. And then you want to draw another one. But you don't want it to be coming this angle or this angle. You want it to be slightly up like that. So this is going to be a one, two, three, four, five pointed star. Then we're going to do the same on the other side. Now, this will take a bit of practice. And a couple of years ago, it took me a while to perfect these. Um, but the good thing about the stars in this book is they're all uneven anyway. So see this one up there? It's all higgledy piggledy. There are some that are almost perfect like that. But so it doesn't matter if you do one that's sort of longer down there and then shorter that that just doesn't matter it just adds to the character okay so as long as you've roughly got this kind of thing going on it doesn't matter if you accidentally do an extra point look i've accidentally done an extra on there six side doesn't matter still looks like a star you could also if you're finding those a bit tricky you could just do that because that also looks like a magical star as well you could draw spots if you find stars are a bit tricky a classic kath kidston teapot spot there until i like my housewares <laughs> my covent garden housewares um and then you could do different things so this is veering away from grants now but you could do a pattern down here because you're going to color it in i haven't got time to color it in 
and I was just explaining to Maria and Russell that I've actually left my crayons in my studio. So I've got, I, I, this is my home studio, but then I've got another one down the road in Brighton. So this is this is the one that's full of all my collections of things. I collect lots of Star Wars action figures and old 80s stuff, and all my all my books are here. So in my, if I was drawing the inside of my teapot, I would draw Star Wars stuff, and I'd have mm. some stars hanging up, and I would also have loads of books. So I'm going to finish off now. We can have we can have some stripes on the spout. We could have some curvy lines on the handle. More stripes here. You can do whatever you like. So I would love for you to do a bit of design work, and I would love to see the outside of your teapot. Designing the inside will take a little bit longer. Um, so if you want to design the inside, maybe show us those on Twitter um, or next week or at some point. Um, that would be really great Lovely. to see the, the inside. Yeah. Oh, that's fabulous, Stephen. Can I share mine that I've yes, done? Please. It's a bit of a mashup. So mine is Octogenie. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's, that's very brilliant. good. That's I want him to be good. flying through the sky. Now I haven't had time. I might, I might draw some oh, fishies along that's here. That's really but this good. Is... Because I was really? thinking the octopus, they would like to have, he would like to be a genie. That's what I was thinking. Maybe that was his wish. He would like to have been a genie. So now he's a, but he's going to have, guess this, eight oh, wishes because he's got eight. <gasps> he would be a brilliant genie. Yeah, eight wishes is much I better know. than three. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm going to put that on the Padlet in a moment. Mm -hmm. So this is wonderful. Now, listeners, if you've listened to other shows, you could use some other techniques as well. I wonder what you will make. Now, Russell, how can our lovely listener learners share what they've made today? Uh, absolutely perfect. Folks, we'd love you to write on the show page. And if you just scroll down from where we are, if you're watching this or listening a little bit further on that show page, and that is uh, accessible from the top there just by clicking on next live show. It'll take you to our Crafty Cafe show number 23. We've got our listener and you just scroll down a little bit further there, folks, and you will see we've got Padlet 1 there. And what we'd like is for you to upload your drawing on there as well, please. And I see there's a couple of them just arriving now. And while Whilst you do that, we have another musical break. And Russell, we've got some fabulous Padlet action, haven't we? We have as well. Just before we get to that, Jem has been in contact. Hello, Jem. Thanks so much. Uh, there. Here was me letting you know, I love this, that we can hear you chatting and can't hear the music. But of course, we can. We are watching the live stream. Bless you, Jem. Yes, that's really interesting. We thought we'd uh, uh, we kind of do it that way around. So we've always got the option to enjoy the music on the main player. And you can hear the back channel chat because lots of folks said that was really interesting very interested to hear us put the show together as well uh, just approving Marthy's uh, post which is now up can you now see that Maria that is a fully colour this is someone who has not misplaced their wow. drawing coloured implements there let's have some comments from you well let's have some comments Comments from our star artist uh, I probably can't see that oh gosh that's an interesting Oh, oh, no, go I'll, on. I'll try. If you keep talking, I, I'm sure I can find it. I will. Oh, I will bless you. On the show page. It. So if you just go to our, our today's live show and you click on that, bless you, he's going to do that. But whilst he's doing that, so Marthy's, if you just give a comment on that, it's on the it's on the Padlet number one uh, on your show page. Meanwhile, Maria, if uh, perhaps some comments from you. Megan, uh, thank you for the template. Can we use them in school? Well, uh, absolutely you can. Uh, anything that's on our show page, you are very welcome to enjoy. And anything on Stephen Lenton here, I am speaking for him, but as is... Uh, personal private secretary i can say absolutely he would not mind at all no. uh, for you to use those in school because they're beautifully finished as well maria talk me through your Ooh. teapot um, wow. um just, just once he's gonna you've got two teapots i can in there. see them now i can see them now. oh thank I you so much so it's marthy's one uh stephen if um if you could just let uh, my galaxy teapot can we have some <gasps> comments on that please oh it's fantastic is it is that a is that a window in the middle marthy I like the galaxy Ooh. teapot. It looks like there's someone inside sort of looking out or something. I love Ooh, all the stars. That's you can click on it, uh, Stephen, if you want to make it oh, bigger. You can just click on the picture there. Oh, I can. And it'll just allow... Yes, indeed. Yes. Oh, you can see a bit more drawing now and patterning. Yeah. Oh, yes. There's lots of texture on there. I love the colours you've chosen because you've chosen... It's called a limited palette. So you've chosen orange, yellow, green and purple. And that makes a really magical combination, I think. So well done, you. Lovely. 
Wow, learning about limited palettes now as well. Maria, back to you, gold and brown. And we know a song about that as well. Uh, but if you just talk us through the teapots there, what's going wow. on with well, you? Well, this, this was the wrapper from a chocolate Easter egg I had a few weeks ago. And you know I never throw anything away. So what I did was I turned my object around and then mm. I embossed onto it. So then you can see that I've done a little, a little drawing on here so that I embossed mm. onto it. Oh, you had a sneaky preview of my next one. And yes. this is what turned up there. That's an Easter egg. egg. That's an That's Easter an egg. Easter egg. No. Look, look so how good. textured that is. That is very yummy. You really yummy. don't throw anything away, do you, ever? Nothing. Absolutely I look not. through the recycle <laughs> bin all the time, all the time. Oh, yes. Now, it's here's good. one good. as well that I made with the inside of an envelope. So sometimes when you get the bills, they're a bit boring and then you have to keep them and file them. But this is the packet inside and there's all different ones. I don't know if that's a bank envelope, but they're yummy. Look at that. That's lovely. Yeah. Oh, I really it looks got like a into final collage. demand to me. That definitely looks yeah, like a final inside. That. I can stunning. see your pin number, Maria. I can see your pin number. Yeah, you can. Now, look at my look at my favourite one. My favourite one is this one. I've yes. made this out of tea bags. No. Now, you can see that I've got some square ones here. They're lovely. I used some circle ones. That was great fun. And if you smell it, because I'm a bit of a smeller, I do like smelling the books, this smells of tea. It's lovely. No. It's absolutely gorgeous. I, I've had such fun doing this. Thank you so much, Stephen. This is fabulous. Oh, it's brilliant so because a great they, look, idea. they look really good as they are, but then you could draw over and you could do even more mm. things on top. They'd make a really good base, a Clever. good foundation there. Oh, Lovely. thank you very much. Can you, can you name is... that tea, Maria? Can you name the tea? Can you actually... The tea is talking... decaf. Mm -hmm. English decaf breakfast Yorkshire. or Darjeeling or no, Assam? Decaf. Or... Decaf tea. I'll get, I'll get to that in a moment. You're very good. Mm. You're very astute. Well done. Now, mm. we've been thinking about making wishes, haven't we? Now, there are many traditions where you can make a wish. Now, in Ireland, if you find a four-leaf clover, you can make a wish and then throw the clover away. Now, Russell, have you ever seen a four-leaf clover? Uh, yes, I have seen a four-leaf clover. Thank you. I was when much, much younger, I have to say, and I think it was out on a, a school trip or something. We weren't looking for four-leaf clovers or anything, but I found one. And I don't ever remember photographing because these are the days when you did not have a camera mm. with you. And if you did have a camera, it had to the the film roll had to go off for boots for a week. So uh, you, uh, you, you young people have just had it have it <laughs> so much better than us oldies. I have to say. So yes, I have. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Stephen, I'm going to ask you a question in a moment, because in Japan, there are wishing trees where wishes are placed on trees. And also, if you catch a falling leaf, you can make a wish. Now, I've tried this. It is Ooh. really tricky. But I wonder, Stephen, have you ever tried to catch a leaf from a tree? I don't think so. I've tried to catch snow and I think sometimes blossom, but I've never tried to catch a leaf. That's a really good one. And I've said there's um, wishing stars as well. I I'm a big Animal Crossing fan. And some evenings there are even um, falling stars in that game and, it, and you can wish on it and you get extra objects. But And I've never wished on a falling star either because I've never really seen one in real life, I don't think. But no, never caught oh. a leaf. Well, that's something for you to do in the autumn, isn't it? Something exciting. You'll remember that. Now, Russell, in the Philippines, when you see some lightning, you can make a wish. Did you know about that? No, absolutely not. That seems absolutely fascinating. It'll make the whole thing a whole lot more pleasant. We had some lightning here today, this afternoon. It's really oh. scary. And I wish I'd known because I'd have made a wish. Do you have any lightning yes. with you there? Yes. No, nothing here. Right. Everything's everything's just, you know, tickety-boo. Now, it made me wonder how these traditions came about. And it also inspired me to come up with my own versions. Now, you know I'm a bit quirky. You know I've got an imagination. So I was thinking, if you see a piece of fruit, this is my own version. If you see a piece of fruit and it's got a sticker, take the sticker off, put it on your jumper or your T-shirt, and you can make a wish. How does that sound? That's a good little wish, isn't it? Good Brilliant little tradition. Idea. Brilliant idea. Brilliant yeah. idea. Or Great idea. if you see uh, a button on the floor, you could pick it up and make a wish. So they're they're my ideas. I'm sure Stephen, you've got you've got some ideas as well, haven't you? What ideas could you invent? Traditions could little, you invent? One of my ideas is a little bit gross, I guess, because obviously I've got a dog, and a lot of guys out there will have a dog, and I think it might because it's not very pleasant when you have to pick up their, shall we say, business. So um, I think maybe make a wish to make the whole experience a bit more pleasant for everyone involved. Um, turn that <laughs> brown upside, turn that brown upside down. <laughs> and turn it into a wish, <laughs> I think. There you go. So uh, Bob's nice having idea. about three or four bits of business a day, so therefore I guess about three or four wishes, so we're quick then. <laughs> Brilliant. I think that's very inventive. And um, I like the turn that brown upside down. I shall certainly be using that. Thank you very much. Now, I remember when I was little, I read a book by Enid Blyton. It was called The Wishing Chair. And when the characters sat on it, they would take you to wonderful places. Now, Stephen, what objects could we use as a wishing transporter, do you think? 
Oh, I don't know. So, well, there's a wishing well, isn't there? You could use that. But mm. um, I don't know. I like the idea. I love it in Mary Poppins when they sit on the carousel and then it all goes animated and they're in a different world, a uh, different sort of yeah, land. So I think maybe, yeah, I imagine if you sat on a roller coaster or um, a teacup or, or a carousel horse or something. And when the ride starts, you could make a wish and then you open your eyes and you are in a completely different place. Just for a little while. You can go back home easily so it's not scary, but you could explore... Um, that's sort of the world that's full of all your favourite things to eat and, and, and do. That would be that would be amazing, wouldn't it? That would be wonderful. Yeah, very, very exciting. Now, I was also thinking about Grant, the genie, who has a magical teapot, which he thinks is a lamp. And it made me think about the different types of tea we have. Now, Russell, this will be no surprise to you that I know that National Tea Day is on May the 21st. Did you know oh, about that? No idea, I'm good. but you are just an encyclopedia of tea days. Wow. Wow. I Amazing. Am. Thank you. We must enjoy tea then. I'm the queen of crafts and the queen of calendars as well. Now, Russell, do you know any types of tea? I'm sure you must uh, know lots of types yes, of tea. Yes, I love my Earl Grey tea, which is very nice, but it has to be enjoyed with a cucumber sandwich and a scone, mm, I have to say. Just oh. absolutely perfect. Uh, also, there is a Sam and Darjeeling. And when we used to go out to Chinese restaurants and eat Chinese food, jasmine mm. tea is always really good. Those are kind of my favourites, really. Oh, I've seen that before where you get some hot water and they, they were all kind of bunched up and then you put the little tea flower on the oh, top yes. and then as the, as the heat kind of started, it kind of unfurls. Stunning. That's very posh. Oh. That's only very posh restaurants, honestly. Very not down by local. Yeah, Doesn't we didn't have that there, in but... Congleton, no. No, 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 certainly not. Down South Coast only, I said. Posh, where Stephen is, I suspect, really good. I have <laughs> seen it. Now, there are also some herbal teas. Now, I'm drinking peach herbal tea at the moment and at night time just to relax me i have a different tea i have chamomile and i have orange tea and it's very nice now some people like to make their tea in a teapot and some people like to make it in a mug and then take a spoon and then squeeze the bag out and some people like to drink their tea with lemon and some people like to drink it with milk and some people russell even like to drink their tea with mint and have cherries in it you know that don't you yes that's very russian thing that is yes they sweeten their tea with uh, with cherries really interesting and, and i think that was that must have been in a tv program or something i i heard that but very interesting isn't it what a great idea very natural you know without adding mm. sugar or anything mm. yes i know and around this time of year people are having some iced tea and sometimes tea tastes different in different receptacles so i've got for the people who are listening um you won't be able to see my fantastic mug but for the people who are viewing i've got a gorgeous mug here and it's a very glass one ting 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 and i can only drink tea out of this mug i don't like drinking tea out of any single one any other mug now we were wondering Stephen, what's your favorite way to drink some tea i'm gonna have a sip now my favorite tea well i'm i'm a bit like you i'm a bit decaf as well so i mainly drink decaf coffee but my favorite i haven't got the cup with me today but i've got my favorite tea i'm mm. putting some to the camera then my favorite tea little my favorite little teapot that has a little filter inside Ooh. my favorite tea which i discovered in one of my favorite cafes to work in which is the waterstones cafe in brighton which i hope will open soon because i miss working in cafes um and it is a combination of apple and mint tea and it's got the actual Yum. you know blocks of mint blocks mm. of um apple and all sorts of different herbs and flowers and that's my absolute favorite tea to drink um mm. and preferably out of a bit like yours but uh, preferably a um a glass cup and saucer i'm a bit into those they're so nice or a cup that's sort of thermal inside so it's got like a cup mm. and then another cup inside so you can pick it up but it's hot inside mm. i think it makes a really big difference the way that you enjoy your tea now russell Definitely. i'm sure our listeners would like to get involved with this conversation how can they do that Oh, they're getting involved right now. In fact, Marthy has a question for Stephen, and I thought I'd just do this now for you. So Marthy says, can I ask Stephen if he's ever going to write a book about a crab? Crab, crab, crab. Thank you. Question, Stephen, over to you. Am I going to write about a crab? Um, not in the near future. Um, there is a picture book that I worked on with an author called Ellie Woolard, Yurang Woolard, um, and it's called Dilly the Donkey, and there's a lot of crabs in... Dilly the donkey, a little wow. monkey. Um, it's set on a Caribbean island, and um, yeah, the crabs sort of help him to so help her rather to solve a mystery on the island. Wow. So, if you like crabs, I recommend Dilly the donkey. But no, maybe a crab or two might find their way into one of the upcoming Genie and Teeny books. So, I think they might go, go to the seaside at one point. 
Mm. Ooh, could be inspired great by this. Idea. Great. And it is good as well. Thanks indeed. Thank you very much indeed for that, Marthy. Really good. This is this is listener comments as it happens. Uh, folks, we're moving to Padlet 2 now. What tea flavour would you like to drink? What imaginative, imaginative, let me try that again, what imaginative wishes could you come up with? And if you want to name a new flavour of a tea, we'll take that on Padlet 2 as well. So invent a tea, give it a name and tell us what it tastes like. And whilst you do that, we've got our third music track today. This is a great one. More wishing. All of our songs have wishing themes now. This is Sigala and Becky Hill. I oh, absolutely love the Quarter to six. You're listening to Crafty Cafe, a Tuesday evening live radio show for young creatives from the team at Seeds of Creativity. And we are live on Padlet 2 now with our special guest, Stephen Lenton. Hello, you're listening to Maria and me. Russell, Megan's been on. I would like to drink a banana-flavoured tea or a strawberry cheesecake-flavoured tea. Wow. I'm sure you can mm. get banana-flavoured teas, can you? I'm sure it's very interesting. It could be a bit mushy or a bit messy, but I think that's really good. Uh, Maria, what else do we have there? Thank you very much. So Lola says, Mummy makes me a milky tea and it's my favourite. Oh, yes, if you put quite a bit of milk in it, it's easier to drink because there's nothing worse than having a hot cup of tea and then you're leaving it for a certain time and then you go back to it and it's cold. So it's quite nice to have it at a nice temperature. Thank you very much, yeah, Lola. Milky tea. And she's cool. got a and wonderful... Yeah. She's got a wonderful wish. Listen to this lovely wish. She said, I wish I could hold my teddy bear and make a wish. Oh, I'd oh. love that. Give your, give you, give you, I was going to say give my monkey a bit of a squeeze because I've got a monkey teddy bear as well as a monkey the cat. Um, you know, give it a little squeeze, your teddy bear, and make a wish and it would come true. You'd like that, that's wouldn't you, Stephen? Idea. Yeah, that's a really, really good idea. I think I might have to incorporate that into an upcoming story as well. Really you could good. squeeze the dog. You could squeeze your dog and make a wish. Squeeze the dog. Or, yeah. or rub the ears. You could just rub the little Although, ears. If I squeeze my dog, I do worry that it might ruin the atmosphere. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Bless. No, I won't. Yeah. And then we're into another wish-making opportunity, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> yes. Happens so quick. Do you love the cup there? I found a lovely cup, and I thought of you whilst you. I thought of you whilst choosing that mm. one as well. I thought that was posh, posh enough for you, Stephen. Nice cup oh. there as well. That's a beautiful. On the cup. on the on yes. the Padler, it's the image on the background. There oh, very fill nice. up with our little post in it. Yes, I know. Well, you know, I know. One tries, one tries, one tries, which is really good. Uh, Good. Thanks very much for those. Keep them coming. You've got a good uh, 13 minutes, folks, to get some more messages out there. And of course, Stephen is available to take any more of your questions. So if any of you, Jem, Marthy, or Mrs. C, or Lola, or Megan, you want to get our questions, because we had questions from you already, if you want to, he is here and we'd be very happy to take your questions. It's like an extra bonus uh, trip with our special guest. And Stephen, we are so enjoying uh, your uh, work today, which is just absolutely fabulous maria what do we have next thank you very much russell so we have got some fun learning opportunities as always so we were thinking if you like to investigate you could investigate the different types of wishing traditions that people have around the world so that's if you'd like to investigate now russell if you are an inventor what could you do oh yes being a bit of inventor myself you could invent a wishing object that you could grant wishes and it could be a well a tree or a chair or you could make some rules as well set some rules up where you could go and how many wishes that you could have a day so you could actually get involved in that and set that up and then you could test it on someone else and see how compliant or how well they follow your rules maria now, if you are good at talking like we are, I used to call that being um, an orator. If you're very good at talking, you're an orator. Now, if you'd like to interpret and just have a little bit of a think, you could talk about whether tea is good for all seasons. So some people think it's just, you know, have a cup of tea in the evening or a cup of tea in the winter or in the summer. You can have iced tea. Think about your reasons, share it with somebody and grow your own opinion because that's how you grow your opinion. You listen to other people's facts, you share it with somebody else, you get some of their facts and you grow your own opinion. So that would be lovely if you're an orator, you could do that practicing. Now, what about Russell? If you want to collaborate, you want to work with somebody else, you want to share some ideas together, what could you do? Well, uh, so Ken Robinson said collaboration is the stuff of growth. And he's absolutely mm. right. It so is. You could uh, work with your friends and create something. You could talk to your family. You could arrange a tea party and you could decide what you're going to serve as accompaniments. You could do a design, a menu setting. You could design mm. nameplates for everybody's seat. And you could get really, really clever and you could just 
was on the menu, tea cakes, scones, what kind of sandwiches, and you could lay it all out in a lovely document. That would be a brilliant idea, but working with someone else on that. Mm. It's nice because sometimes you have some ideas and then somebody else has some more ideas and between the two of you, you make a really brilliant idea. Mm. You know, the more people mm. you can collaborate with, the better. Now, you could also ask your friends what kind of tea that they like to drink and you could make a radio advert to persuade somebody. So if I was going to oh, make yes. a radio advert, drink my tea, if I was doing a chamomile, a chamomile one, I wouldn't be shouting. I might say it a little bit more gently. I'd say, come and drink my chamomile oh, yes. tea. It oh, makes yes. you relax. And we'd have soothing music. We'd, yes. have, we'd have really soothing, gentle music mm. in the background. Yeah, nice idea. Yes. Nice idea. Yes. But what about if you want to, you just want to go full full blast with your creativity, Russell? What could they do? Well, I turn up the creativity button here and you could design and create your own genie. And it could be fabulous. It could look like Stephen Lenton. How fabulous would that be? And this is what he looks like. So you could do a genie like him. He's a bit genie-fied as well, actually. And you could uh, design your own reception. Yeah. What does he live in? Now, of course, Grant lives in a teapot, but he thinks that's a lamp. And that is brilliant because you could design something else that your genie thinks they're living in. And then you could design what's on the inside. These are brilliant extendable learning opportunities. Love it. This is fun learning. And the document is up on the website for you to look, download and enjoy. And if you're a colleague, you might want to use that in your classroom teaching. You're very welcome to that resource. Maria. Thank you very much. So we would like to know from our listeners, what kind of fun activities would they like to do? Now, can I ask Stephen, is there anything there that you would like to do? What kind of activities would you do? Make a menu, do a radio advert? I think I used tea? to love doing radio adverts at school uh, or, yeah, or, or um, yes, or, or now nowadays, because it's so easy to film things. Like uh, we couldn't film anything. It's, uh, it's, uh, even at secondary school, we didn't have a camera, but now you've got your um, fancy phones making a radio or a TV advert um, to, yes, sell your wares, sell your tea, sell your teapots. That would be really good. I think that would be really funny. Yeah, or you could even do a little stop animation, can't you? You know, when you take a little photo of one, then you can yeah. put them all together. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be you. nice so... to have a tea, teapot dance. Yeah, be great. Lovely. Thank stop you very much. You've got some fabulous ideas. Now, Russell, how can people get in contact? Uh, well, we'd love to uh, see you right up on our next question, folks. We want to work on Padlet 3 now, and this is what fun learning are you inspired to do? So what have we motivated you to go off and do? And I can see there's a post there from Lola's Mummy. Thank you so much indeed for that. And whilst we do that, and whilst you get involved in that, here is our last music track. This is the X Factor finalists. Where are they all now, I have to say? 2011. This is featuring JLS and One Direction. We know where they are as well. This is Wishing on a star. This is Crafty Cafe. And we're looking at the Padlet now. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, Marthy has been in touch and uh, she says, I would like to make an afternoon tea for Mama and Dada and a menu saying what they get. Great idea. Mm. Absolutely great idea. But Marthy, do tell us what they're going to get, what you're going to plan for them. Let us know. Share it. Come back and put your menu up there. And you could write it out like you're going to serve them. So what would they have... Uh, you know, on arrival at the afternoon tea, you're going to serve tea. What type of tea? We'd like to know what type of tea, wouldn't we, Maria? It's mm. definitely no. Yeah. Did you what? just hear my tummy rumble then? It was just a Yes, I'm growl. afraid we did, actually. I'm doing my best to filter that out, but that's not good <laughs> as well. <laughs> just talking as well. I've had crumpets this afternoon. Uh, just to kill you. I have to have something. I have to have a late tea on a broadcast day. So afternoon tea, which is very civilised, I have to say, because once upon a time, well, I'm sure Stephen does this also, then afternoon tea served a little earlier than what eats a little later. <laughs> But uh, we generally all kind of have our tea around five-ish generally. And so things are different there. Lola's mum there. Have you got that one, Maria? I have. Oh, this is fantastic. Listen to this, Stephen. Lola's mum said that Lola and her are going to make a golden genie who lives oh. in a cornflake packet and cornflakes are sprinkled when a wish is granted. How That's cool is brilliant, that? brilliant, isn't it? I love the idea of a golden <laughs> genie as well. And living oh. in a cereal box. Yeah, because they could live in all sorts of things. You could live in a, a watering can or a, a grandfather clock or anything mm. anything such a good yes. idea golden genie i, w I, I wonder if we're coming up with some ideas wow, really good yes i love it love it i wonder if we're coming up some up with some ideas for your second book Are you coming up with any yes. ideas already yeah well it would have to be th two's done but no number three and four definitely because I, I i've got a general idea but lots of these things are yes they're um they're going down in my notebook 
Oh, lovely. I'm so glad you're making some more books because when you really enjoy a book and then it's gone, you know, you want to yeah. find out what happens next. So we're very excited to find out that you're doing a few more books. Yes, now, right. Russell, this has been one of the best shows that we've done. I mean, this is just a fabulous show. It's show number 20. Look at my script quickly. 23. 23. Thank you. 23. Yes, I think, 23, I think then, this yeah. is absolutely one of the best ones we've had. What have you enjoyed about to share? What about... Uh, well, Stephen Linton, in. having him at his, uh, having his draw, uh, draw line, having the extra camera, having four cameras on our show, just stunning mm. being able to mix that and being able to now just switch live to the mm. Genie camera and that's live and I love the stars, there's an extra star in there, there. Oh, look, and I love that. And these are the extra <gasps> down in there. That's really good. I love the uh, the number. Oh, l oh, love it, love it. And these are really good. These are all downloadable from the website and I love the immediacy that it brings, Murray. It is absolutely stunning. I really oh. good. Those are good resources there Stephen they're beautifully uh, produced and it's all available from his website stephenlenton.com it's where you need to go to find the resources on there I know we are good to you we should be on commission I have to say it was really good. <laughs> I, saw, I retweeted the Waterstones picture today which is really good oh, well uh, done, just um, what it's like you know going out for a, a dog with Bob a dog a walk with Bob <laughs> and then seeing your book in Waterstones window what was that like that must have been fascinating it was really magic and I, I, you know I've had, I've had a couple of books in windows before but because it's my first one that's I've written it's extra magical and the best thing was uh the books surrounded me like there was sophie hen there was sue um sue hender and paul linnett you have to be careful how you say that couple indeed you do well done thank you we <laughs> appreciate that um, and lots of yeah lots of brighton artists and authors and illustrators in that window so that was the best thing about it to be amongst my pals Oh, good old Waterstones, I have to say. That's very good of them to be able to s support their local artists. We think that's really... But we try where yeah. possible to support the local bookshops as well. Try and take away from the huge multinational corporates that already get a lot of money from us. So where we can, we get a, 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 um, a small uh, bookshop involved. Maria, it's just been an absolute fabulous show. What about you? What has your, been your favourite bit? Oh, I think watching Stephen actually do his drawing at the same time mm. and actually having a bit of a rest because usually I have to do the make along. <laughs> so it was really nice. Yeah. I could make along and just listen to those instructions. I loved it. Now, Stephen, can we ask you, what was your favourite bit? Mm. I enjoyed doing the drawing as well, but I've learned so much today. I, I didn't know a lot about, I didn't know about the lightning. I didn't know about the leaves falling. I didn't know a, a lot about wishes at all. I now realise I thought I'd done my research, but I clearly haven't but um yeah no lots of new ideas and um yeah lots of new facts in my brain thank you Brilliant. oh thank you so much it's been absolutely wonderful for you coming along to the show today and thank you Pleasure. to everyone for listening as well and joining in and if you'd like to make along next time just check out on the show page and you'll be able to see a list of equipment to bring with you next time Absolutely. Uh, we'd really, really like you to do that, folks. Everything is up there. This show will be up for you to listen to again as soon as we possibly can. We'll put the video up as well. I didn't think we did a too bad a job as well. Um, we've all got great faces for radio. I had a special, I've done my hair specially for the show, uh, which is just fabulous. Yeah, right. So, I mean, I just, it should be up for a playback as well. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know uh, how you enjoyed the show. And thank you so much for all our uh, participants, all of our listeners, for contributing to it. We really have appreciated that as well. And to our special guests. Stephen Lenton, they've made today very special. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you next time at the Crafty Cafe uh, Learning and Making Show. And thank you so much, Deed, for enjoying us. Until then, it's goodbye from him. And it's goodbye from her. And it's goodbye from them.